Um, uh, I got a compliment from Ross yesterday. Where you, uh, you're good at being scary, he told me, uh, when we were playing Snap on, uh, and this is where I learned to be scary. Um, Sounds like an advertisement, but it's not really uh, well. Uh, I'll talk about uh, the prisoner for a day. Um, prisoner of a day was uh, born at Aspelon. That's a place outside Bergen, and this is Aspelon. It's the only intact uh, prison camp from the Second World War in uh, in Norway, and as you can see, it's. Uh, hosted in a very unhospitable place. Uh, this is literally like the coldest place around Bergen. It's uh, on average about two degrees colder than uh, all the rest of the terrain in Bergen. And if you look closely, here, there is also a river taking down the temperature even more. Uh, it was uh, one or two camps built in this area. I think this photo is actually taken from the second camp that was built in the area, but this camp was torn down, so this is the only one uh, alive uh, or, or still standing. So there is a museum there trying to um, take care of the heritage of this prison camp. And in Bergen, there is also a um, human rights organization called the Rafto House. And together with uh, a lot of schools that participated in it, we were charged with or, or asked to create a, a LARP to teach people about the Second World War, social his, uh, science, and empathy. So we tried to create a, uh, a LARP that would go into these themes and be a vessel for discussion. We came up with a three-hour uh, LARP uh, where the participants played prisoners at the Aspelant uh, prison camp. And this is a picture of the participants doing chores outside. Uh, these particular participants are picking ice and cleaning ice and moving sand from point A to point B and then moving it from point B back to point A just to be mean. Now, what we wanted to do in the design of this was to work with differences and similarities. So we wanted to create an experience for uh, the participants that was a point of departure for further discussion. So we started, uh, I'll give you an example of uh, some of our thinking. We started with the player experience. So I'd be very honest and uh, also in the build-up and also on the day that this would be their most awkward and horrible school day during their entire time at school. Uh, it was going to be cold, it was going to be loud, and it's going to de be de dehumanizing. At all these points, people were allowed to opt out, uh, and we tried to be very, very honest about what we were going to do. Now, in the aftermath, after having this, uh, these physical experiences, the psychological experiences of cold, loud, and dehumanizing, we would have a um, teaching program where we tried to contrast that with these kind of photos or these kind of discussions. This is a photo from the actual, or from 19, I think from 1943, at Aspelon, female prisoners being uh, incarcerated or being processed to go into the camp. So this, is, this wall is an actual building from the Aspen camp. So a question we would ask them is, what are the differences? And what are the similarities with what you've gone through and what these women went through? And then we took that further and put up this photo, which is a mother and a daughter in France just after the Second World War. They were charged of having fraternized with German men, so they were shaped. And again, the question was, what are the differences and what are the similarities of what you've gone through and these people went through? And then lastly, I'm gonna show a picture that we didn't show to the pupils because we ran this between 2007 and 2009, but just to sort of uh, bring you into our kind of thinking, this would be a typical picture we would also include in this. And these are uh, Syrian migrants trying to cross the border between Greece and Macedonia. And again, what are the differences and what are the similarities uh, between your experience and these people's experiences? 
So for the, um, I'm going to go through three sliders that you have uh, uh, that have been presented already. So obviously this is uh, close towards the max of the 360 illusion. It's the actual camp outside Bergen. It's two de degrees colder, as I said. And it, it's weird about those places, but it's very imposing. Like you walk into that camp and you feel kind of queasy. It, it doesn't feel nice. And I think it's a combination of the actual location, but also the history that has been there. It's not a pleasant place. Now, obviously, a on a design, uh, de design issue, it's a, difficult, uh, it's a difficult LARP to recreate outside the camp. It has been done. We have done like small versions of it outside. But the camp is, in many ways, an integral part of the design. And it's fairly expensive to do, both with transport and the amount of people that we uh, uh, had manning the camp uh, and, and just carrying it out. For transparency, we aimed for informed consent. And we had the benefit of teacher-assisted participant care. So we would have uh, a fairly uh, rigorous process of interviewing the teachers before we did the, th uh, the game asking them if they had uh, pupils that shouldn't be there. We would invite them in for, uh, for an, uh, to take part, but not be uh, in the game. Um, and then, but then, obviously, it's difficult to achieve 100% informed consent. Like, how do you tell people you're going to have a horrible day? Um, if they haven't had it, how can they know they're going to, like, what, what does that entail? So obviously we had the, uh, 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 the opt-out rules during the game as well, but the before the transparency of what we were going to do, uh, I demonstrated being like uh, behavior as a guard beforehand and we talked about the things that would happen, but still difficult to achieve 100% informed consent, but this is, we tried to achieve it. And the last one I will discuss now is the play, player mo motivation. We did, and this m might sound a little uh, weird, uh, that we wanted them to explore, but they were prisoners. How can you explore in a prison camp? Now, if you take the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the sort of divide that Wagner was, uh, was between gamification and exploration, it becomes clear that this definitely exploration, because we created a LARP without winners. We were very explicit that, you know, you can stage a rebellion if you want to. We don't have any weapons. We don't have any attack dogs. Uh, that's OK. But that's not what this LARP is about. You can also flee this LARP. But it's, I think it was about five kilo uh, kilometers in snow and rough terrain to the next bus stop. So we said, I'm not coming and getting you. So you can flee, but we're not getting you. This is not what the LARP is about. It's about, uh, it's about despair and dehumanization. So we wanted to, uh, uh, to give the players a lot of alibi for exploring how it is to survive within that kind of fiction. So they would survive uh, answering, or uh, explore answering back, shutting up, meeting eyes, no, not meeting eyes. So within sort of a limited framework, they would explore quite a lot, actually. And they would, um, after three hours, they would have a very accurate idea of of, of who all the different guards were, because we'd given them quite sort of different parameters on how they would act with, uh, uh, with the prisoners. But through exploring the fiction, uh, they'd sort of gathered who the different guards were and how they worked and who they should be extra afraid of and, and whatnot. Um, I put up a minus there as well. The intentional confusion that is within the fiction uh, could, is possible, uh, can cause disengagement. Um, and by this I mean, if you honestly don't understand what's going on, you sort of give up. What we found is that age is, is probably the most important thing, and that's also a design choice you can, uh, you can work with. What does it mean to invite in 16-year-olds versus 18-year-olds? And for those of you who work with schools, you will know that uh, there can be huge differences in maturity and, and insights and, and just like being able to live those fictions. So again, something to, to uh, bring with you in that manner. 
if you're going to try anything like this, I will do the special mention of Stanford Prison uh, Experiment and Milgram Experiment. Do read up on the ethical issues of doing things like this because there is a whole lot of them. We don't have time to discuss that right here and right now. But if you want to discuss more about this, Sasha has been a participant. Martin Nilsson has been a guard. And I have been both a participant and a guard. So you can uh, come and ask us, and we'll tell you all about it. OK, thank you.